In this video, you'll see how we DIY'd the installation of our backyard turf. Follow along! The yard used to have a pond in it, so we did have to level it out before we started the process. Then we installed bender board to define the shape of the lawn. For the turf, we went to Broadmoor Landscape Supply here in San Francisco and selected a turf that had multiple colored straight and curly blades, including brown blades, which really match California grass since we don't get any rain during the summer months. This makes our turf look super natural. Next we installed weed cloth. This step is optional, but recommended, and since our yard grows tons of weeds, we thought this would be a good idea. Installation is really easy. Just cut to size, leaving a small lip around the edges and overlapping any seams. Then nail down the perimeter with two prong stakes. We had the turf delivered on a forklift. For the roughly 450 square feet of lawn that we wanted to create, we also ordered two tons of decomposed granite, which will serve as our underlayer, and 450 pounds of sand, which will serve as our infill. Along with some decorative rocks and mulch for our landscaping, all of that is what you see in those two white bags. I thought the two tons of decomposed granite was going to be the biggest pain to move to the backyard, but it was actually the turf itself, which was too heavy for us to carry. We had to unroll it and cut the turf in half on the sidewalk in front of our house before being able to transport it, and even then we were barely able to move it. But we did it, it just took us a while and a lot of sweat. Oh God, that's so heavy. Huh? It's still so heavy. Decomposed granite allows you to level the area and gives a solid surface for the turf to sit on so that it doesn't end up with sunken areas down the road. We found conflicting information about how much granite you need, but the two tons of granite that we ended up ordering provided an inch to two inches of depth and it seemed to be enough. Spread the decomposed granite evenly and make sure your surface is graded so that rain can flow where it needs to go. Use a 2x4 to level and a tamper to compact it down. The pros usually use a plate compactor, but we bought this $30 hand tamper and it worked out fine. Google this. Should you water decomposed granite before tamping it down? I don't know. I think maybe just a light mist. Okay. Let's try it. looks down into our yard. Uh, last night we put out the turf and to let it air out a little bit since it's been tightly wound up. And today we're just gonna rough cut it to size and get all the little, uh, all the little pieces that we need. Rough cut your pieces so the seams align but the edges overhang by at least two inches. Okay, now we're doing the edging. The grass comes too high above the edge, and so it looks kind of funny. So we're gonna have to, like this whole edge just looks like buzz cut haircut all around the side.
here to get around the beam. Oh, this blade is dull. Oh, I need a new blade. Change your blades frequently. It makes a very easy job of this. Next, it's time to tape our seams. First, we apply this seam tape. We put it all along the decomposed granite, and then on top, we applied the glue. There's two kinds of glue that we know of. There's this one that comes in this liquid gallon format, and we're gonna apply it using this $1.99 trowel. This gallon of glue was $80. Uh, the other type of glue that we know of is a glue that is applied using a caulk gun. So that would have been probably a lot easy to, easier to apply, but that's not what we were given by the turf supply store. So we're going with this. seaming and I put bags of sand down to weigh it down. I'm a little concerned about how the seaming went because we didn't put a lot of glue down so who knows all these seams could just come apart tomorrow. Where I thought we had too little glue it ended up being perfect because the glue expands as it cures. So my recommended trowel size is a 3 16 of an inch tooth. In this part of the turf we used a quarter inch trowel tooth size and it was a little too much. You can see the glue has bubbled up which makes the seam visible. The next step is to nail down the edging with six inch galvanized nails. Every six inches, we will put one of these nails. The only thing you have to be careful for is uh, making sure you're not nailing in the blades of grass. You'll see what I mean. Okay, this is the final step, infill. You can use sand or you can use these rubber pellets that they sell. All you need is a shovel and a broom. You can get much more sophisticated tools, but this is all you need. You need one pound of infill for each square foot of turf. Shovel it through, brush it through, and then you will have turf that is soft and also with bristles or blades that stand up straight. That's all there is to it. Okay, we're done with this project. It's starting to rain a little bit, so I gotta make this fast, but we're super happy with the results. The total cost of the project was $3,800. We could have saved a little bit of money by picking our second favorite turf. That would have saved us about $800 or so. Um, but we went with this one because it looked so natural. The other thing about turf is that it comes in 15 foot rolls, or 15, the, the rolls are 15 feet long. And um, that meant that we have been left with a lot of off cuts. And some places do sell in seven foot rolls, which means that you can be a lot more efficient with your cutting. Um, but we didn't have that. Uh, so now we have a bunch of turf that we uh, aren't using and that we paid for. If I could do anything differently, I would purchase this S seam cutter tool that they sell just to make the seams blend in a little bit better. And the other thing is I would highly recommend having more than two people to move your turf around as you're trying to position it because the turf is really heavy. But other than that, you guys can do it yourself. Thanks for joining and see you next time.